There are thousands of videos on this channel telling you about this latest productivity tool or that latest productivity tool. But I know many of you don't have a choice, particularly when you're at work, because of security. Most of these people are locked into the Microsoft world. But that's not actually a problem because whilst we don't see a lot of videos on these tools, Microsoft do have a number of very powerful productivity tools that can help you to get focused on the work that needs to be done. And today I want to talk about one of those tools specifically. That tool is Microsoft To Do. Now Microsoft To Do has an interesting history. A few years ago, probably about five or six years ago, Microsoft bought a task manager called Wunderlist. And Wunderlist had a lot of people who loved it because you could change the colors and it actually was very, very nice. It was customizable, but in a limited way so that it didn't interfere with your overall productivity. Anyway, Microsoft came along and bought it and eventually shut it down and it reappeared as Microsoft To Do. Now, as I've been working with some of my coaching clients who have this problem there, they don't actually have a choice over what task manager to use, I've come to find that Microsoft To Do is really quite powerful. Today I want to show you why I think this and if you are in this position where you don't have a choice when at work, I want to show you how to get the most out of it. Now, in the sidebar on the left-hand side of To Do, at the top we have a number of pre-existing lists, if you like. Now, one of those is called My Day, which is incredibly powerful. More on that later. We also have like Planned, we've got Tasks, which is effectively your inbox. But then underneath that, we have Lists. Now, all task managers seem to have different names for this particular area. To do is calls it Projects, others, Microsoft, uh, look, Apple Reminders calls it Lists, and Microsoft To Do calls it lists. And I actually prefer that because it then doesn't confuse the issue and makes you feel you have to put projects in there. But the thing about lists is you can create whatever list that you want. Now, I'm going to recommend that you set up the time sector system. Why wouldn't I? Because I know that system works. So if you set it up with this week, next week, this month, next month, long term and on hold, and a separate folder for your routines, you've got a nice way to organize your tasks. Now, the reason why I strongly recommend the time sector system is if you try to manage your day on a task level, you are gonna find yourself overwhelmed, stressed out and anxious because there's just too much stuff coming at you on a daily basis. And I know a lot of people like to organize their list by project, but this is a task manager. It's not a project manager. If you really need to manage projects, that's what your notes app is for. That's what David Allen would have called your project support materials. That's where you manage projects from. A task manager really needs to be time-based. It's what I call time-based productivity in that you've got a limited amount of hours to work with each day. And that's a good thing because now you've got constraints. Constraints are good. And this means that you have to pick carefully where you are what you are going to work on and how much time you're going to spend doing it. This way you avoid being stressed out, overwhelmed and anxious because you are dealing with reality, i.e. this is the time that I've got, these are the thousands of tasks I've got to do, which ones are the most priority or the biggest priority. Now the way to get to do to work for you is based on two fundamental principles of time management and better productivity. And that is the weekly and daily planning sessions. Now at a weekly level, you will throw any of your tasks, you'll look at your task list, and I would be looking at this week, next week, and this month. And what I'd be doing is you pull in tasks that you decide need to be done in the next seven days. Anything that you feel needs to be done in the next seven days gets moved into your this week folder. Now this is a critical part of using to do because of this folder at the top called my day. My day is a very, very powerful 
focusing tool. What I like about my day is any task that you don't complete on the day will immediately revert back to its original list. Now that list might be tasks if it's stuck in your inbox or it might be in one of your folders in, I say folders, I mean lists in the sidebar. And that's a good thing because it means that you are now forced, and I really mean that as a good thing, you are forced to plan your day. Now the only problem I have with the my day list is that you cannot pre populate that list the day before. You have to wait until after midnight. It is my day, literally my day. That's today. So for those of you using to do, what you would need to do is every morning before you start your work day. And what I would do here is I would then spend five minutes and no more, five minutes before you start your day in your this week folder, which you've already decided when you did the weekly planning session, these are the most important tasks for this week and you move the tasks that you are going to get done today. Now I would caution you here and make sure that you do have your calendar open at the same time. The reason being is you do need to see how much available time you have for tasks. For most of us, our appointments with other people are always going to be the priority of the day. So if you've got seven hours of meetings and you work a typical eight hour day, that actually only leaves you with one hour if you're lucky to deal with tasks. And obviously on top of that, you've got to deal with your messages, your emails and anything else that cops up that day. So you do not want to be adding 20 tasks to your my day list when you've got six or seven hours of meetings that day. You've just created for yourself an impossible day. There's no point in blaming your tools in that situation. You accepted those meetings and you really did accept those meetings. Therefore, that's where your priorities are going to be that day. They're involving other people. Now, one of the good things about to do is you can actually set up your Outlook where you would flag an email and those emails will then show up in your to do. Now, I would also caution you here. Not every actionable email needs to be in your to do. Now, here's the way I work with this. Although I don't use to do, I use to do ist. But what I do here is any email that's going to require 30 minutes or longer to actually do the work that's contained in that, that will go into my task manager because I need to find extra time for that. I don't want to be wasting 30 minutes of my time when I'm trying to clear my action this day folder in email. If you haven't already done, learnt about my email processing system, I recently did a video on that and I'll put a link to that in the show notes below. But that is one of my caveats with using sending email to my task list, in this case to do, I would be very, very careful because if you start sending 20 or 30 emails into your to do every single day, you are just building a backlog that's going to take forever to complete. You need to put in a constraint to prevent you from doing that. Most email can be dealt with in two or three minutes. It's never usually that long those emails that require 30 minutes or more are actually become a task and they should then go into your task manager. But make sure that you may have a kind of a rule before an email automatically goes in to do. Now you'll notice that the planned section of your to do is really quite smart because it does organize things here by the tasks and their date. You'll also see on the top line here that I can look at my overdue. And let's be honest, we're not all perfect. We're not all gonna complete our tasks every day and you are gonna have a few overdue. That's a place to go at the end of the day just to reschedule some of those tasks. But that's one of the beauties of time management and productivity being manually connected to your task manager. I know a lot of people are desperately searching for ways to automate everything. But unfortunately, when you start automating your task list, so it automatically shows you what you should do today, you have now given up agency on your life. You've given up agency on where you're going to spend time. You're now relying on a computer to tell you. And computers have no idea how you're feeling, whether you had a fight with your partner that morning, whether you caught a heavy cold or coming down with flu. It doesn't recognize that human side of 
time management and productivity. We are a long way from getting to that position, but I'm sure it will come in the future. Right now, you need to have that human connection with your task manager. And that only means that once a week, you spend 40 minutes planning the next seven days. You spend five minutes a day, perhaps 10 minutes if you've had a particularly busy day where you need to step back and just review the landscape, so to speak, and just get yourself reorganized, ready for the next day. If you follow these principles, and Microsoft To Do really helps you to do that, you are gonna find yourself a lot less overwhelmed, very, very few backlogs, and you're just gonna feel a lot less stressed, which is great because the less stress you have, the more productive you're gonna be. If you're trying to automate, and I've, as I say, I've seen people writing comments on some of my videos, oh, you can automate this. Yeah, you can automate this, but good luck with your life when a computer is telling you, this is what you must do today. Not a good position to be in. There needs to be, as I say, that human touch that's going to give you that focus for the day. And Microsoft to My Day is brilliant for that because you cannot aut automate it. You must go in every day and you must plan your day. And anything that gets people to be consistent in planning their day, I'm just gonna give a big round of applause to. So there you go, that's my take on Microsoft To Do. I think it's a brilliant task manager. It's simple, you can organize it the way that you want to organize it. Of course, I'm going to advise you to take do the time sector system, but really it's entirely up to you. You organize it the way that you want to do it. And with it being a Microsoft product, you can connect your OneNote to it. Of course, Outlook is connected to it. It's a solid app and it works and it does what it's meant to do. So for those of you who feel they, they would love to get involved in all these third party applications, you don't need it. Microsoft To Do will do the job for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. And as I mentioned a bit earlier, if you're interested in how I do my email, then this video up here is the next video to watch.